Hello guys, uh, Fru here. Welcome to the channel. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about a very interesting uh, concept. As a matter of fact, we're going to do a comparison of uh, two of the most interesting language models there is out there. So we're going to be looking at GPT-3 and comparing that with uh, GPT-J. Now, we know when it comes to generalized pre-trained models, these are really the two top ones uh, in the industry. Now, how do they compare? That's going to be the exercise uh, for today. Uh, GPT-3 is pretty huge. Uh, it's pretty big. A lot of people know this. Uh, it's a massive model. It's a very massive model. We're talking about one, uh, 175 billion uh, parameters uh, to train this model. So this is huge. And the, the language model itself, some of the results are pretty impressive. But then you have uh, the version out there, which is uh, GPT-J uh, by the Eluta AI company. And this is a little bit of a smaller model. It has about 6 billion. So this is J, 6 billion. So 6 billion parameters, uh, but still very powerful nonetheless. So let's look at this one, 6 billion parameters. So basically looking at 6 billion parameters versus 175 billion parameters. I think logic would tell us which one is going to win this battle. Now, uh, for the comparison, and this is not a scientific comparison, we're just exploring this, uh, trying it out uh, from a demo perspective and just educating ourselves. So uh, what I did was I quickly put together uh, some prompts, right? This is just a basic prompt that the average person would want to throw into a language model to see what results they get. So uh, six questions here, uh, nothing scientific, just to give us an idea uh, on, on how we can explore this model and, and see ca what kind of results we get. Uh, now, I haven't done this before, so the questions might all be surprising to us. Um, so let's just dive right into uh, our very first question. Uh, the very first question, if you think about interacting with the language model, is we want to get the opinion of the language model. Who are we talking with here? What is your name? Are we talking to somebody in particular? What is your name? I'm sure a lot of people want to know the name of the model we're dealing with. So let's start with uh, OpenAI, uh, GPT-3. Uh, so we're going to be using, uh, in this case, uh, let's use the DaVinci. Let's bring this down. We're going to be using the DaVinci uh, Instruct Beta, which is the, the largest model they have, right? It's bigger than any other model, even more so than the DaVinci itself or the DaVinci uh, Codex. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our prompt uh, in here. Uh, what is your name? So just a very simple, straightforward prompt. Uh, and we should see what we get here. Does it uh, respond or is it going to uh, be thrown off? So let's run that. What is your name? Uh, so clearly it doesn't pick it. It's just not giving us response. It's just asking uh, more questions. That's not what we want. Okay, so that's that's good. Let's switch over to uh, GPTJ with the same question. And we're going to ask uh, the same question for GPTJ. What is your name uh, in here? So uh, the GPTJ model, again, is uh, maintained and built by the Eluter. A Luther company, I hope I pronounced that correctly, .ai, and it's also available on uh, GitHub. So if you want to try it from there, you certainly can. So let's go ahead and try and see if we get better results here. I'm not going to change any of the parameters. We're just going to see what results it gives us. So what is your name? Hello, what's your name? Let's run this model. Does it do any better or does it uh, give us worse results? Just one thing from observation here is it took a long time to run this particular model. You can notice it. And... It, I think, in my opinion, it does answer. So we're talking to Chris. So we're talking to Chris. So there is a Chris behind the scenes. So on the GPT-3 side, uh, you can see that the results wasn't what we expected. Maybe I need to change the engine, but I was using the biggest engine. So uh, I would expect it to at least understand what was going on. But on the GPT-J side, we at least got an answer that is reasonable, right? Not only does it tell us what the name is, it tells us uh, I'm Christian and kind of goes into more details than I would, would care to, to read, okay? Uh, so I speak on occasion, so uh, definitely a lot more information than I, was, uh, uh, than I was expecting. Not everything is coherent. There's some duplicates, so I'm Christian. Uh, I'm Christian. It seems to be duplicating there, so I don't do it anyway. Just a lot of stuff. But uh, I would say this was a little bit more uh, impressive to me than the GPT-3 uh, one itself. So let's go ahead and clear this and move on to the next question. 
that we have on our list, the next prompt that we have on our list to see how these models compare. So the next one we're gonna look at here is the question that everyone is asking about, right? Everyone, every human cares about this question. So what does this model tell us about the meaning of life? It's a very important question. I'm sure you're wondering, what is the meaning of life? So let's see what uh, uh, GPT-3 uh, with the DaVinci Instruct tells us. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to live and to help others, I, uh, I guess. <laughs> so in case you've been wondering what the meaning of life is, this is what uh, uh, GPT-3 will tell you, live and help others. I, I don't think a lot of people will disagree with that. Okay, so that's interesting. Now let's go over to uh, GPTJ and see what is the meaning of life. Maybe we're gonna find something here uh, that's different. All right, so let's go ahead and clear that. What is the meaning of life? Let's run the model. Uh, as always, it seems to take a little bit longer for GPTJ to uh, produce results. I'm not sure why, but we have some results here. What is the meaning of life? So here's our result. Uh, and you can just see from this that this seems a little bit more comprehensive before we even read it than, um, than um, what we have here on GPT-3, right? Just one short sentence, but here we have almost a paragraph, okay? Now, what does the paragraph say? Uh, there is a great deal of chatter about the meaning of life. For the sake of brevity, I'm going to address the question as I understand it. What does the life, what does the word life mean in this case? Uh, let's see, to be clear, the word life in this case refers to a particular physical life that I'm leading. It's the life I'm having. I want to make it clear. I don't mean life in the sense of life in general. All right, a little bit of a longer response, but I will give this a, a fail, right? Because it doesn't answer the question. Uh, it doesn't understand the semantics, I would say. I, I think that if I was trying to figure out what the meaning of life would be, I would take this answer, short and precise, over this answer, which is a little bit longer, but I don't think it answers the question um, uh, that clearly to me, in my opinion. Now, some folks might disagree. So that's that. Let's clear this and move on to the next one. Let's clear this and see the next question that we have is, what career should I choose? A lot of folks, a lot of you are watching these videos. You're thinking about career. You gotta pay the bills. And you're asking yourself, you're asking your mentors, uh, what career should you choose? Well, what if the AI can answer that for us? So what career should I choose? Again, not a lot of context, but how well would the AI uh, respond to this? So let's uh, submit that for GPT-3 and see what it gives us. So it gives us an interesting answer. So let's review what we get. So uh, you should choose a career in the medical field. All right. Um, hmm. I wouldn't expect that, right? I think a medical field is good. Medical folks are pretty amazing people, but uh, I don't know why it's coming up with that. Explanation. Um, thank you for the explanation. Answer should be, you should choose a career in the medical field. Okay. <laughs> why? I Interesting. All right. Um, so uh, that's interesting, but let's let's see what the GPT, uh, GPTJ has to say for us. So let's clear this, clear that, and see what uh, career we should choose according to uh, the brains of oh, Chris. Remember, Chris is a person. According to Chris behind uh, GPTJ. All right. So what career should should I choose? So according to Chris or GPTJ, because he told us he was Chris. Uh, what career should I choose? Um, if you want to work for yourself or have family, you can select one of the following professions. Okay. Uh, and this is a list of professions. So again, I would say this is good. To me, I will give this as a pass. Okay. I will take this over, over this answer. So uh, if we were keeping scores, and I didn't keep scores. So you remember the first one was J. The second one, the meaning of life was uh, uh, three, GPT-3. Uh, what career should I choose? I'll give this to GPT-J. All right. I'll give that to GPT-J just because I think that, yeah, um, this is just telling me to choose the medical field. I have no idea why. Again, the question will be why the medical field, because it might or might not make sense to me. But uh, GPT-J is telling us and giving us a bunch of options. Now, within these options, you know, you can go ahead and pick anyone that makes sense to you. 
So not as precise, but overall, I think this would be an, an interesting one. All right. Very fascinating. Very fascinating. So uh, let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. I think right now you can see Jay is leading. Jay is leading. Who would have expected that? <laughs> I wouldn't have. All right. So now let's copy this. Who was the president during the American Civil War? Now, just and the reason for this question is just to go through history because you can imagine this model is pulling from a, a, a corpus of text, uh, like a huge database of text and, and, and books and uh, Wikipedia articles. So I would imagine that they should both be able to answer something like this pretty quickly, right? And this are, uh, it's not just, you know, generic uh, questions. This is something that the answer should be pretty straightforward. So let's go into our very first candidate here, uh, GPT-3, and see what GPT-3 has uh, for us, right? Who was the president? It should be a straightforward answer. Uh, to, it should be a straightforward question to get an answer to. Who was the first president of the United States? And you see it's warning about unsafe content. That's okay. That's good. I think that's good that it's flagging this. Uh, we don't want unsafe content, so I understand that's good. I don't think it's unsafe in any way. So let's accept that. Um, but the answer is correct. Okay. Let's go to uh, GP, uh, GPTJ and see what GPT uh, J has to say for us. So for GPT J, who was the president during the American Civil War? Again, a, a Boolean answer. Bull I expect a Boolean answer. Well, not a really Boolean answer, but it's a, it's a very straightforward answer. So let's run this and see what we come back with. Anything less than uh, Abraham Lincoln, I think that could be a fail. Is it going to be a pass or is it going to be a fail for this one? So it's thinking, it's thinking, uh, it's thinking. All right, now we have our result. Um, and that's what one of the things I've noticed is with GPT uh, J, the answers tend to be more verbose. It seems like it, at least in my opinion. Um, so it gives us the answer. Well, it expanded the question. And it says, answer. So this is a answer. Abraham Lincoln was the president of the United States during the American Civil War, although he had little to do with the war in 1861. Blah blah blah. So it, it just goes more. So it, it tends to be more verbose with longer answers. So I will call this a tie for both of them. Okay, because this answer is correct. You can make an argument that precision is a, uh, uh, is a, uh, has a, you know, uh, has a certain value to it in, in itself, right? You know, I think it's uh, Einstein who said, if I had enough time, or somebody who said, if I had enough time, I would write you a shorter letter. So having uh, more concise responses is not always bad. So this one is a tie uh, for for both of them. So they both is a tie. So if we go to our responses here, who was this? We'll do 3J. So both of them, uh, this one is clearly a tie in a non-scientific test. So let's go to the next one. Uh, Coco Pepsi. Oh, God, this is, uh, is going to be a fun one, wouldn't it? This would be a fun one. And I'm sure there are going to be people out there uh, saying, uh, on both sides of, uh, on all sides of this debate, this has been a debate that has been raging on for a very, very long time. And it just might be that with today's uh, video, we're going to settle this once and for all. Once and for all, right? Let AI speak for us. So which of this is better? Is it Coke or Pepsi? Which is better? So let's go ahead and run this with GPT-3. I think I need to select that. And then we're going to run that with GPT-3. Who? <laughs> okay, all right. What a surprise! You're getting there, pretty aggressive. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Coke fans, I uh, I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, uh, don't blame me. I think that's what uh, the GPT folks, uh, GPT three folks, I uh, think uh, is better. All right. Uh, so let's see on the other side with uh, GPT J. Uh, uh, which is better? Is that Coke or is that Pepsi? Let's uh, open back that up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to paste the question in here. I expect a long answer, but I want to know, or you want to know, we want to know which is better. Uh, I think this will be a fun one. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. According to Wikipedia, it's giving us a reference, uh, giving us some statistics. 
according to the source, just strong market. All right, it didn't answer my question. Or it didn't answer the our question. It did not answer the question that we had, which is better, Coke or Pepsi? Straightforward question. Just giving us some statistics, but no answer. So I would say this is a fail. To me, that's a fail. All right. And this, whether you agree or not, is a pass. Okay. So for this one, for this one, by unanimous consent, consent, we're going to give this to three because I think the answer was just more precise. And that's one of the characteristics you see with the GBTJ where it tends to be more verbose, which means that if the answer is correct, it's good. But if it's off, it's just annoying because it's just a lot of wrong answers, which makes it even worse. So uh, let's go ahead and clear this. Uh, let's bring that uh, and then uh, select that. We're going to go back. I think we're almost done right at the, at the very end. All right. So last but not least, uh, here, let's see, we are at a tie, believe it or not. Whoa, whoa, I did not expect this. So J, J, 3, 3, and tie. So this is going to break that tie. <laughs> this is going to break that tie. Let's see uh, uh, what we get out of this. All right, tell me a joke. Let's see how creative, how smooth, how funny, uh, the AI can be. And for this one, uh, let's actually switch it here a little bit because some folks might say, oh, you're biased because you're running uh, J after three. And so the results might be biased. So for this one, let's switch it a little bit. Let's actually get the answer from J and then we're gonna get the answer from GPT-3. So let's go ahead and run this. Tell me a joke, pretty straightforward. I mean, just tell me a joke, how funny are you? All right, the joke I know is uh, nacho cheese. Whose cheese is it? Nacho cheese. Some people get that joke, but um, all right. Let's see if this can be more funny than I am. Um, uh, let's see. It takes a few seconds. Hopefully, it's gonna be a really funny joke. I'm ready to laugh. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Tell me a joke. Um, so now it's going into a joke. So let's see what the joke has to say. So tell me a joke. Tell me about the time. Uh, tell me the time, tell me I'm special, tell me something I can use. All right, so maybe this is a joke. For most people, the concept of life without any religion is impossible to phantom. To begin with, most people have a hard time grasping the concept of there being any purpose or reason to life without God, but it's not impossible. To those who live life without religion, life becomes more simple, clear, direct, instead of being driven by the need to prove that I'm special. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, uh, I uh, I wouldn't consider myself uh, very critical of jokes, uh, but I would say this one is... Uh, is uh, I'll give this a fail because I don't think it really makes me laugh because um, I, I don't find it funny. That's just me. Maybe somebody finds a joke in there, but I don't. So let's let's see what uh, GPT three has to say. Is it gonna make us laugh? Who's gonna have the last laugh? So tell me a joke. Let's go ahead and run that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the winner was clearly obvious. So uh, you can just tell from me laughing here that the winner was clearly obvious, right? Knock knock. Who's there? Joke. <laughs> laugh. <laughs> All right. I would say to a certain extent, it's funny because it's a knock-knock joke that people might know. So I think he's trying to play on that. At least I laughed. So for me, this would have to go to GPT-3. This one would have to go to GPT-3. It's not the funniest joke. Dave Chappelle is not probably going to laugh at this. You know, some of your funny comedians will not necessarily laugh at this. But I think it's a pretty... It's, I would take this over the other joke. So for this one, I would have to... I would have to... And don't hold me on this, right? Because uh, uh, jokes are kind of subjective, but I would have to give this one to a, a three. So if we go back to our poll and we give this to GPT-3, and guess what? Ta-da! The winner is GPT-3. So the winner to this is GPT-3. So after six questions, trying both GPT-3 and GPT-J, uh, both are interesting. It was a hard-fought battle. 
uh, close down to the wire, but uh, GPT-3 had the last laugh. So that was pretty, 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 pretty impressive. So guys, there you have it, a non-scientific poll just giving us exposure to uh, some of the greatest uh, advances um, and computational power we have. It seems like this is all jokes, guys, but this is amazing technology. This is transformational technology we're dealing with here. So both teams are, are hard at work. They're delivering a, a very competent uh, platforms, you know, both on the open AI side with GPT-3. And, um, and I'm pretty impressed. I never really worked with this uh, um, uh, GPT-J side, but uh, just from this exposure, you can tell it's not a 175 billion parameter uh, model, but it's nonetheless uh, pretty, uh, pretty impressive, I would say. You know, it can tell us jokes. It can respond to questions. It, at least it has a little bit of sanity to it. So, um, but albeit it goes to, the winner goes to GPT-3. Uh, it's not a surprise. It's a bigger model, 175 uh, uh, billion parameters compared to 6 billion. So I'm just not surprised that the winner goes to uh, GPT-3. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting. Guys, if you have questions you want us to, uh, to look at, to compare, uh, if you want to try this out yourself, you're more than welcome to do so. If you have any comments, if you've tried it out, had any feedback, don't hesitate. Jump into the comment section below. Tell us your jokes. Tell us the responses that you've had. Uh, share your experiences with both of these platforms. Do you think that my scoring was fair or was it biased? Uh, I don't think I was biased. I think I was pretty fair. So uh, GPT-3 came out on top by a slight margin. So uh, that was pretty fun to do this exercise. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, before we go, just make sure if you haven't, uh, check out physically.io, uh, which is a database we have with the largest database of fiscal calendars on the internet that anyone can access and use. Uh, whether you're talking about sales, B2B sales, uh, you're talking about marketing, you're talking about investing, uh, you engage your customers at the right time, you, you, you uh, uh, invest at the right time, and it requires you having an understanding of fiscal calendars. So uh, this platform, Fiscal.io, is the largest database of fiscal calendars for any company uh, in the world that you can access, you can use uh, for investing, for sales, uh, or for just staying on top of your knowledge uh, for different companies. So uh, check that out. Uh, Fiscal.io is a sponsor of the platform. I really appreciate you uh, giving uh, the platform a shout out and uh, hopefully getting value out of it. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Fru. Uh, you have been awesome. I'll see you in our next presentation.